Peace and greetings, everyone. Divine Zeal here. I am here with a pretty amazing Alibaba haul, mega haul <laughs> of some microcontrollers for some up and coming projects. Um, so yeah, I wanted to give just a quick review and um, show you the main seller I went through, um, King Hill Electronics in Shenzhen, shout out to Hong Kong, um, and just uh, give a real life review of <clears throat> you know how things are and how they come out uh, when you're getting things from China, especially Alibaba. It's not your normal um, marketplace. You know, you don't just go and just add things to your cart and just buy them. You kind of have to have some communication and back and forth with some of these guys <clears throat> to actually get um, the things you need. But you know, if you uh, put the time and effort in, uh, you can get a lot of cool stuff. So I'm gonna go through everything and um, test them out and show you just how to, you know, make sure your stuff's working and um, get uh, moving on your projects. So first up, <clears throat> we're going to look at the uh, Nano 3.0, um, which is this board right here. <clears throat> um, it's actually a Arduino clone and I'll show you um, how I get it up and running and test it real quick using uh, Arduino uh, IDE. So here is the uh, Arduino Nano clone and a uh, quick overview. Um, it has the AT Mega 328 um, in there and <clears throat> it has a uh, LED pin on the 13 pin and it has 14 uh, digital input output pins, eight analog input pins, six PWM pins. So it can do quite a lot. Um, communication through UART, I2C, SPI, and um, has input output voltage of five volts and um, 16 megahertz on the processor and um, two kilobytes SRAM, 32 kilobytes flash, uh, so it could do quite a bit. Um, could power like, you know, keyboards, tons of LED lights, um, lots of different uh, pins you could put on. Um, so I'm gonna show you uh, a little blink code real quick. Give me one second and just plug it in. And there we go. So that's nice and working, got the blink going. And, uh, you know, using Arduino code, um, you know, make sure you install your uh, board package and you're good to go. Yeah, so um, this is a pretty awesome uh, little guy. Uh, you could do quite a bit with this. Um, So, um, you know, you could put these in wearable technology, home automation, like smart lights, smart home. Um, you can even do some robotics with these. And that's the great thing. These are really small. So um, you could have multiple of these and a single robot controlling uh, different motors and lights and all of that. Um, obviously, Internet of Things, these would uh, be great um, to because these are great because um, they don't have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, but you can pair it with other microcontrollers like the ESP8266 and have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So this is controlling um, certain aspects um, and other microcontrollers are controlling other ones. Um, you can uh, do, do quite a lot with this. I really um, enjoy these and it's nice that uh, you know, even though it is a clone of the Arduino uh, Nano, it's um, quite cheaper, you know, and still has a lot of the functionality. Um, so I give this 10 out of 10. Next up, we have uh, these little guys. I'll give you a close up later, but these are the uh, ESP32C3. 
and uh, these are pretty amazing you can see super mini uh, these are pretty amazing because it has wi-fi and bluetooth um, and it's a pretty powerful little guy so let's take a little close-up so here's a super close-up of the c3 shout out to iphone 15. wow um, but as you can see there's quite a lot of pins and um, it's that 3.3 volt and um it has two uh, buttons there, reset. And um, what I like too is that it's USB-C and And yeah, this is gonna be um, really good for a lot of different projects um, because it takes the capabilities of um, the regular ESP32 and allows you to do so much more. Um, I have quite a few projects um, that I'm working on. And then if you add a, <clears throat> like a NFC or RFID reader or even a GPS or a SIM module, uh, you can get a really powerful uh, device and because of um, these extra pins you can also add um, a display module as well all right so next up we have one of my uh, favorites this is the d1 mini <laughs> another clone of the remos d1 mini yeah, this is a very uh, special and nice one because uh, this also has um, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi um, with a 2.4 gigahertz frequency range. Um, doesn't have five gigahertz on the frequency range for Wi-Fi. Um, so it can't be like a router replacement of sorts, but it can still do a lot of uh, really cool networking things. Um, also got this uh, case for it printed out. I'm gonna do a different case. Um, I did kind of like this case. Let me see if I have one. And it has, um, you know, a top for it. But I need to do some modifications with this design because um, it doesn't quite fit. Um, but for now, you know, it's a cool top piece for it. And um, it connects with USB-C and um, there's tons of pins as well, um, which makes it good for, you know, combining it with other uh, components. Um, like one cool thing you could do is combine this with um, maybe a Arduino um, Pro Micro or something with HID support. Um, because the only thing with this, it doesn't have HID support, which is human interface device, like keyboard and mouse and all that. Um, but yeah, let's get the blink working and make sure it works. So here I found the uh, examples and just went to blink and Arduino IDE. And then it loaded up this quick, easy, um, LED test and I found my board and you got to find the Lowland Waymos D1 mini clone and um, you can find that in the ESP8266 uh, down there or whatever your um, board may be and then make sure you connect to the right port and then as you can see brand new D1 mini working and it's good just to uh, do this. You can, you know, now that you have everything selected, um, I ordered like 10 of these. So just go and plug them in and uh, upload the code. Um, so next time when you do start it, the second you plug it in, you see that it's blinking, you already know that this can uh, run and do everything you need. All right, next we have the Raspberry Pi Pico. And um, this is, classic um, so I definitely had to get quite a few of these because I have um, some projects that I'm working on 
Uh, the future of this has micro USB um, a gazillion uh, pins. Like literally a gazillion. That's why uh, these are really awesome. You could power a whole freaking Game Boy clone uh, synthesizer robot. Um, what have you. Uh, me personally, I'm using this for uh, some cybersecurity tools and also some uh, retro gaming tools. Um, but I'll show you a quick process to um, how you get this going. And we're gonna test it with a uh, easy blink uh, tutorial, uh, blink script. So with this and with a lot of other microcontrollers, um, you gotta hold the uh, boot button, which is right here, while you plug it in. And this will allow you to flash it with um, a certain uh, firmware that runs, um, for instance, CircuitPython. So you're gonna hold it in, and then plug it in, and then you let go. And then you'll see this uh, RPi RP2 drive that pops up. And then I'm gonna drag in some firmware. All right, now you see a folder with your code. We have this uh, easy LED test, and then we're gonna upload it. Let me look over here. And we got a working Raspberry Pico. And this can also do uh, quite a lot. I have some other projects I'm gonna share, but I'm gonna go and run through all of these, make sure all of these work. Um, and I highly recommend. And then there's also the Pico W, which is the Wi-Fi version. And that's even more amazing. All right, so next up we have another tiny little microcontroller, as you can see. This is the uh, DigiKey clone um, from DigiSpark, and I'll show um, their website and you know the official pinout. Um, but this one's interesting because it's uh, very uh, small and it's using the um, AT Tiny 85 uh, microcontroller and. It's uh, that little guy right there. Um, but yeah, it's a very uh, compact uh, microcontroller and there's quite a few pins, not too many. Um, so you can connect like a uh, mechanical key or even a few other modules to get some better use out of it. Like you can connect like a Wi-Fi module or something. Um, but yeah, we're going to uh, plug it into Arduino um, IDE, and I'm going to show you exactly uh, how you need to uh, set this up because um, with all these microcontrollers coming from China, there is no documentation. They give you no instructions, and you're uh, basically on your own. So here we go. All right, so first and foremost, you're going to want to uh, plug this into a USB 2.0 uh, plug-in. Um, as you can see with like these modern ones, um, this is USB 3.0. So if you're trying to plug it into this, your computer won't recognize it most likely. Um, it goes the same for anything with these, uh, uh, see this USB connection. Anything with these older ones, uh, they probably use USB 2 or older. So you're going to want to plug it into um, something like this if you're using your um, MacBook Pro. Um, just like older uh, USB hubs or ports. Alright, so once you uh, plug it in, turn that on, and uh, you can see it's starting up. And I already have a <clears throat> um, blink going on but what you're going to want to do is you're going to go to um, your settings and you're going to go to your board manager urls and um, originally you're you're going to want you would think you would use this um, package from digistump but it seems like it's out of it's not working right now. It doesn't seem like it's online. Uh, 
like here normally um, if you look up instructions for the Digistub HT Tiny 85 um, you'll see a package kind of like that but that package is not working anymore so um, you know I don't know if you want to take a screenshot of this but you want to use this Drazzy package and um, I think it would be best to if you could somehow clone this in case this goes down um, before it's too late. Um, but yeah, you're gonna wanna add that because then you can um, go to the board manager and you'll just type in Digi and it brings up all the, um, it brings up the library for all the microcontrollers under the AT Tiny Core. And then you can um, upload your code. And as you see, the uh, Blink app, the Blink script is working. And I'm just gonna go through these and test those out as well. All right, so next up we have the um, WaveShare RP2041. As you can see right there. And uh, this is a really interesting one too because it's similar to because it's similar to um, the Pico. This is coming up next. There's like a Pico clone, um, <clears throat> so it fits a lot of what the Raspberry Pi Pico can do into a really tiny USB form factor. Um, so it opens up a lot of possibilities to do a lot of um, interesting stuff. I'm gonna give a close up of the pins. So here's a close-up of the uh, WaveShare. Now, I don't know if they are clones or not, you know, who knows. But, you know, it works, it turns on. As you can see, the uh, 2040 right there. And um, yeah, quite a lot of uh, pins that you could solder into um, nice and semi-easily. And then it has a uh, reset button and a boot button. And um, like with uh, Pico, you'll uh, hold the boot button while plugging it in to flash whatever. Um, for this uh, little tutorial, I'm gonna use uh, MicroPython. And through this video, I'm showing you can use various different things. You can use um, Moo, you can use, um, you can use Moo for CircuitPython or MicroPython, or you could use the Arduino IDE. So let's take a look at that. When I plug in uh, this Pico clone, you can see it has um, <clears throat> a power LED, and then you could uh, program it to do whatever that way. But if I take uh, one of these and plug it in, um, this LED here, um, doesn't plug, doesn't turn on initially because this is actually a RGB LED. <clears throat> it's like a, it's a NeoPixel, uh, which is cool because you get a lot more color, so I'll show you. So um, I've already coded this one. Um, so we'll plug it in here and turn it on. And you can see that we can manipulate the actual color. So I'll make it a different color. And yeah, so you can just mess around and it's cool that this is actually um, not just a regular LED because then you can get um, your own cool custom colors, whatever your project might be needing. And yeah, so this one, uh, the RP2040 is also really cool because <clears throat> it has um, HID support, so you can use it as like a mouse jiggler, have macro commands for your keyboard, and do a whole bunch of other cool stuff. So next we'll be quickly looking at the um, RD2040, which is another variation <coughs> of the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico. <coughs> I wanted to get a few just different kinds. Um, so clearly now you can see there's the uh, wave shares, uh, version. We have this YD2040 and then we have the Pico. I think this one's a little bit bigger than the Pico. Um, 
but that's okay. And um, also have these cool cases for the Pico. So you could see um, the YD is a little bit bigger. Like this wouldn't fit in a Pico case. But it still has um, a lot of the functionalities. Here we can kind of compare them. Um, the boot button is in the same place. Uh, you can see that some of the components are a little bit smaller. Then we got the back. But uh, what's special about this one is it has um, some ports up here that you know you could maybe add um, like an SD card reader or you know um, add some header pins to connect uh, a few other things um, so it's really cool so overall that's a pretty um, haggard <laughs> overview of the Alibaba haul um, thanks for tuning in and I hope to give some more individual videos on um, just the individual microcontrollers and how to set them up and um, how to download the individual thing because th there really are no guides and the more <laughs> documentation um, that people can uh, put out is very helpful um, especially the people who are selling this stuff you're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars for stuff getting no documentation um, very bad translated <laughs> English um, so I hope this is helpful to someone and I will be going a little bit more in depth on uh, some of the uh, projects I'm working on. Got some uh, cool microcontroller um, things that I'm working on and uh, hopefully they'll be available uh, for sale and whatnot in the future. Um, but I wanna make sure you guys understand what the heck they are and how you can implement them into your life. So thank you for tuning in, and um, if you enjoy this, give it a like, subscribe, all that stuff. And as always, stay peaceful, stay positive, stay progressive, stay productive, stay active. And I promise you, you will always be blessed. Divine Zeal signing out. Uh, I'm a mess. I got a lot of stuff to do. Peace.